tears in the night. Hey, welcome to Half the Battle. Today we're taking a look at one of the dumbest Cobra Commander plots we've ever seen. And remember, this is a guy that tried to use endangered species and ghosts to take over the world. So, with that said, let's take a look at Lasers in the Night. We start the episode with two girls taking a night class on... something. Heroism and history, I think. And I have a small problem straight off the bat with one of the girls' voices. Sandy, the nerdy guy-obsessed one, is voiced by Morgan Lofting, who also voices the Baroness. And unfortunately, her nerdy voice gets similar enough to her Baroness voice that, for most of the episode, I was convinced she was the Baroness in disguise. Who cares about old Greeks when this campus is packed with young hunks? Anyway, they spot a sign advertising a G.I. Joe martial arts exhibition and Amber, the blonde one, decides to attend. Inside, Quick Kick is doing what he does best, kicking quickly. We soon learn Amber is quite a martial artist herself and manages to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Quick Kick. The shirtless wonder apparently gets turned on by getting his ass kicked and asks her out on a date. It seems opposites attract, since, aside from the martial arts thing, they have very different interests. They do share a love for kicking though, so there's that. Amber soon asks if she can join the G.I. Joe team. Yeah, because an elite military unit takes people who aren't in the military all the time. Quick Kick isn't up for it, as the chauvinist thinks Cobra is just too dangerous for her. How dangerous could they be? And as if it was on cue, Cobra captures one of the Joes with a... laser whip? Oh dear god, Cobra are the Ferengi in disguise! Having captured the G.I. Joe spy, Cobra Commander orders the Baroness to obtain a device from G.I. Joe. And the episode must have run long because we immediately cut to a G.I. Joe facility in flames as reinforcements arrive. Lady J rushes in and promptly gets knocked out. She's rescued pretty much straight after, and then the entire facility explodes. Well, that seemed totally pointless. Or was it? Duke figures Cobra was after their new device, a laser guidance system, but the princess was in another castle as they moved it to Joe headquarters. Duke is certain Cobra will try again. And once again, as if on cue, a ninja tries to infiltrate Joe headquarters. The ninja is of course immediately captured since security at Joe headquarters is competent. For once. And only once. The G.I. Joe base has been infiltrated so many times, Sartan has his own locker. In a twist I'm sure nobody saw coming, the ninja turns out to be... Amber. Amber explains that breaking in seemed like the best way to prove she'd make a great Joe. Yeah, that's like breaking into the White House to prove you'd be a good Secret Service agent. And that's why I'm not allowed into the United States anymore. The Joes believe her, as they are at least smart enough to not assume malice when stupidity is also an option. And Quick Kick gives her a tour of the place. We're changing the security code on the Sky Strikers. No one, especially Cobra, can get past our defenses unless they know the code. And we change the security code every day. Tonight's code is 1069. What are you doing? She's still a civilian! Don't give the code to her! Meanwhile, Lady J makes a suspicious face, so you know something is up. Meanwhile, meanwhile, the Joes finally figure they might want to look into one of their guys disappearing. Gung-Ho's last signal came from somewhere on Snake Island. Well, of course Cobra builds a base in a place called Snake Island. You wouldn't want to make it too difficult to find you, huh? I wonder if that's how they found Osama. Did his compound have a big plaque on it that said Bin Laden Manor? And was it located on Al-Qaeda Boulevard? Anyway, Amber barges in on the top secret meeting. Convenient. And she also barges into the room with the top secret device. Convenient. Time to check in with Cobra as Destro approaches uh, Snake Island. You're just in time, Destro, to witness my latest stroke of brilliance. What is that madman up to now? Good question. I'm sure the answer will be satisfactory to all. A mysterious spy sends Cobra the top secret code that can negate the early warning systems, and Cobra attacks. As the Joes are caught completely off guard, the attack is devastating. 
In fact, Lady J is the only one who manages to get a plane off the ground. However, her... This plane... was shot down over the Sea of Japan. It spun in. There were no survivors. The devastated Joes jump to the conclusion that Amber is the spy. Well, it's not much of a jump, really. And so Duke orders Quick Kick to bring her in. Because you want to send the lover of your enemy to go do that. No chance of a conflict of interest there. Duke, you have over a hundred Joes. Send one of them! So then, a half-naked man rushes into a college dorm for girls. Before you can say, call literally all the police! He finds Amber's friend from the beginning of the episode, and she plays him a voice message Amber left. Sandy, this is Amber. I'm heading for Snake Island. If Quick Kick shows up, don't let him know where I've gone. I'm afraid the Joes think I'm a Cobra spy. I have to prove I'm not. The only way I can think of to eliminate any doubt is to get inside the Cobra base and smash it by myself. Lady, who do you think you are? Wonder Woman? It's gonna take at least three or four people to take down a base that size. Cobra Commander reveals his new weapon, the most powerful laser in the world, made even better by the Joe's guidance system. Before he can explain his plan, Amber is spotted and captured. Again. By the other side this time. Lady, you suck at this. You're the reason dumb blonde jokes exist. Now, let's get ready for a twist, everybody. You. Me? What are you doing here? I belong here, Amber. I work for Cobra. You may call me the Baroness and call yourself a fool. <gasps> Who saw that coming? Oh, right, everybody. Continuing the stupidity, Quick Kick heads to Snake Island. Alone. Without any backup. Dumbass. Meanwhile, Amber is locked up with Lady J and Gung Ho, and she's finally able to do something competent. Freeing Gung Ho from his chains. Finally, the commander puts his plan into motion, and fires his laser at the moon. That's no moon. No, that really is the moon. Before he can explain what the hell he's doing, he's again interrupted, this time by Quick Kick barging in. God damn it. And Quick Kick is promptly captured. So now Cobra Commander finally, FINALLY reveals his plan. No longer will people see the man in the moon each night. Instead, they'll see my face and know that Cobra is undefeatable! This entire thing was so he could put graffiti on the moon. You have the most powerful laser in the world, and that's how you decide to use it? I... I don't... I... I have no words. I... I can't think of anything to s Destro, could you take it from here? This is your brilliant scheme, Commander? You've wasted millions on this? This cosmic graffiti? Thank you. When the guy who dresses like this tells you your plan is stupid, you know you've screwed up. Uh, let's shove this turkey in the oven so it'll be done. The prisoners promptly escape, and with one gun and three unarmed people, they scare off Destro, the Baroness, and Cobra Commander. What? You had a platoon of armed Cobra troopers there! Apparently, the cartoon felt the same way as I did, and wanted to wrap this crap up as soon as possible. Ugh, everyone is against me! With plans like that? Yeah, we are! And as a final screw you to physics, the Joes managed to make the moon look just like it did before. And that was lasers in the night. My thoughts? Well, let's first use every ounce of our willpower and put aside Cobra Commander's plan for just a moment. <laughs> the overall story of someone who wants to join the Joe team and who therefore gets caught up in the intrigues often associated with the fight between Joe and Cobra is an interesting one, and it's handled quite well. 
and making stupid decisions while trying to impress people is something that happens often enough. It's also nice to see a romance plot that doesn't center around Scarlet or Lady J for once. But I can't overlook Cobra Commander's dumbass plan to use the most powerful weapon in the world to graffiti the moon! With a weapon like that, you can blow up, literally, everything that's on Earth! And yet, you use it to graffiti the moon! You fail, Cobra Commander! You fail exponentially more than usual! Ugh. Look, I'll see you next week, everybody. I gotta go wash the stupid out of my brain. Strangers in the night Exchanging glances Wondering But your bollocks did up good, you did! They do! Woo -woo 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 -woo. Let's try that again. Yeah, that's like breaking into that... His compound had a big plaque on it that said Bin Laden Residence and it was located on Al Qaeda Boulevard Al-Qaeda. You guys call it Al-Qaeda, right? Was the compound, 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 take three. I wonder, is that how they found Osama? Was his... Oh, bollocks. Take five. Because you want to send the enemy of... The enemy of your lover. No. This isn't going well. Because you want to send the enemy... Why do I keep doing this? Lady, who do you think you... The, 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 the. I... I don't know what to say, I'm... I'm, I'm literally speechless here! Spe the, 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 box. But I can't overlook the absolute stupid... I have no idea what I'm gonna say next. Yay me!